in advanced tax yeah. based on having what you you over a period we come up with the average tax which you Richie, I believe, is the presumptive tax that they are referring to. I wanted to comment about Jebukati uh, uh, and this inquiry thing. Now, uh, Richie, when you are not there, I, I did indicate that uh, the you, you are you are saying that you know how how the elections were rigged, how the election was stolen, but remember. That was not that that allegation is not acceptable. The difference with this whistleblowing thing is that the whistleblowers have gotten hard evidence, which they can use, which can be used by the people who engaged them. And earlier on, Richie, I did give the example of the Scotland Yard. You remember what the Scotland Yard did in Kenya when they were investigating the death of the, the Robert Uko. Now. I had indicated here that the organization which has come up with these revelations have done some investigation, more or less the same way the Scotland Yard were investigating the death of Robert Ouko. And they are like an audit firm, just like KPMG. They were commissioned and they are being paid for this. And I did say here, they are not a wash was anything you can rely on their findings because they are authentic, because it is from authentic information obtained from actual information at IEBC. Never mind how that got out of IEBC. But the truth is they got information, authentic information from IEBC, which they have gone over. They have done further investigation and they have found out, they have found out the original information and they have come to the conclusion they have audited basically that election results and they have found out that Baba had 8 million votes, Ruto had 5 million votes. And they are willing and ready to share with you that information. Now, that is how worrying it is. Come to the issue of you are, you are asking why is uh, the president still talking about Chibukati, the hero, Chibukati did this, they want to kill Chibukati. One of the reasons why he cannot proceed to do that inquiry, because remember this so-called information which have been tabulated by these whistleblowers that this investigative company, it may well turn up at that inquiry. And if it is authentic, the way we believe it is, do you see them that they may be opening a Pandora's box? So protecting Chebukati, the best way may be not to go near that inquiry. Because that information may be forced to be revealed there. People may appear there with the same information and they may actually be opening a Pandora's box on what exactly happened on the elections day, on that official platform, a commission of inquiry, constituted by the president himself. I'm sure you may not be willing to go that route. Thank you. Kuseo, uh, there's some information I want to pass to you. I'm not, uh, I'm not aware if you have the information or perhaps maybe it's a slip of the tongue. I want to tell you like this, uh, in the United States, in the United States, let me give you an example for one state, New Mexico. New Mexico depends on the federal government 100%. Kentucky, which is one of the poorest states, gets funding from the federal government to an average of about, uh, what, let me say, let me look at the data here. Uh, 36, around 36 percent of the budget of Kentucky comes from the federal government. And in many other states, I can go ahead and mention so many others of which Najua Tatuta Maliza Sai. But what I was saying is this I have never seen a governor, whether from a blue state or a red state, 
go to beg the way we want to normalize begging in the Republic of Kenya. Hello. Yes, Ben. We can hear you. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been dying to answer that question. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me, let me give you. All the states do that every day. The Santos in the front, they just got hired by Trump, and the Trump gave them all the money. I mean, all the, the Democratic, like when Obama was president. In the United States, my friend, I can give you example after example after example. Don't use, I mean, it's understandable that you don't like, you know, Ruto, but the states, wherever they, like the Democrat, the Republican was, all the Republican states will get whatever they want. In, in uh, when Obama was president, New York, California, they got everything that they were asking for. So it, this is the constitution in Kenya was copied from America. That is the worst. But I will say, I will answer one other question because I, I see you guys are talking a lot. But I want to say this. Hussein answered the question of the taxes. I mean, uh, yeah, the, 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 the shortages of the, of the financing of the government, what they call it? Um, deficit. 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 Yeah, the deficit. Yes. Thank you very much, Gusev. The deficit is everywhere in the world. The only person who has balanced the budget, the way you guys want to balance the budget in Kenya, was Germany with Angle Marco and with America with Clinton. I don't think even Obama got there. They, just last week, Makiadi, they were raising the, the, the ceiling for the government so that the government in the United States can keep borrowing. So, my friends, when you say some of these things, yes, in the Kenyan situation, we are where we are, the Democrat, the Republican, I mean, uh, the Ura are doing what they are doing. The economic theory that you guys keep on talking is an e economic theory that was written by everybody, by the common household. But the only thing, Makia, they will understand, I will understand with you and agree, if the con corruption continues, if the corruption continues, all that budget doesn't mean anything. Lastly, I did not I could agree with Kioni. When he went to, with the president, and his group, when he gave a speech in the, the Jerome House, we thought he was playing. But when he says that he wants to produce a government, I mean, uh, an opposition party, he wants to give his opposition, that's wrong. Even Raila said it, and, uh, you know, I don't like Raila, but I agree with him on, on this one. Because you have to change the constitution to be, a, you know, like, a, a, like England, which is a parliamentary democracy. But a presidential democracy like in the United States, even now, who say, you don't know who is going to be the Republican leader. As of right now, Trump is ahead in the Republican Party. But you have to move to the center so that you can win. So you don't know. And when Clinton took over, it was the same thing. Obama came from nowhere. Beat people like uh, Kennedys, Biden, Miss Clinton, all those. It is what the people want. If we can get there, Machiavelli, if we can get where we agree as a people, and the last election, I think I've shown to a large extent that the tribe is not really matter that much. It, to a certain extent, we have come a long way. But if we can go to that end, I think I would like that better than giving somebody a position. Like Trump, like I said, uh, uh, Obama and uh, Clinton could have never been president if we had an office of the opposition because there were more senior people than Obama. So they could have not get there. And that's a really dictatorship, redundancy, and all that negative stuff. So let us criticize what we can. Let us talk through everything. But everything that you have talked about today is an economic theory, a taxing, housing. I'm uh, Personally, I'm putting a group together so that we can finance a property. And as soon as you finish building, they pay you back. And it is on public land, the land that, you know, everywhere in the country, there's public land somewhere. So they, they start from there. And you and me, Makiadi, you know, we, say, we put our money together. They say $300. And they will end up paying us $600 back. So it is a, a theory. Can it be done? We, you know, we have not done it. So I cannot guarantee that, it, that everything is going to be copacetic. That's life. You know, we make mistakes here. We do everything we can. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, my friends. Oh.
Nani, no, 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 no. Rich, let me just ask uh, P- Penny yeah, something. Be, Penny, Penny, don't, be, Penny, don't leave. You have P- questions. Penny, are you aware? Are you aware that uh, those, I want to call those people investors or developers? Are you aware that uh, WSR already have them? What do you mean, WSR? You, you remember the, all this going around with the affordable housing project that he's trying to go around with? Right. You you already have a line, a list of in developers who are willing to do exactly that. Yeah, but and, we, can, we can... Okay, me and you cannot give up. If we have an idea of what we can do as social developers, we can't give up. Go ahead. So, so all I'm saying is, I wish you had approached us earlier. You, we, we would drop in and, and be part of people in the list. But I know that you already has a list. Yeah. So are we too, is it too little, too late for us? Just, just <laughs> no, no. Uh, 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 no. Right. It's like, uh, okay, personally, I was negotiating with the governor of Kisi about the land and all this other stuff. So how can we, how can we not get, get it? It depends on where you want. But I understand what you're saying. But if, you know, we can agree on this one. Ruto has done all kinds of stuff. I was growing up when he was in, in that youth organization beating up people. So I would not justify him like to be an angel or anything like that. But it's the economic theory that they did in uh, South Korea that worked. That's how it developed. South Korea was bringing money even from Kenya. But like I said earlier, Kuse, so long as there is no thiefery, as so long as there is no corruption. If the corruption is there, that's useless. P- Penny, my, my question to you is this. Uh, I thought you would also address the issue of raising the 2.8 trillion. You've explained what presumptive tax is. I agree with you. But I want to tell yeah. you, I want you to answer me. How is the government of William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa going to raise 2.8 trillion? Is it two point eight trillion a, shillings from the informal sector? That is what I want you it, to answer. It, it is like this. Uh, I'll, I'll just go over the same thing. You see what's happening? It's all about first of all getting data. And and uh, I before Richie before you came in, I did say here that this hustle thing is about data collection. Watch you know, you are borrowing five hundred out of you. No, the critical, the yeah. important thing, the where the value is in this hustle thing is in the that thing they call saving. That saving is going to give authenticity to the data of information about your transactions. By the end of it, KRA is going to issue PIN numbers to all the people based on that saving element for each and every one. And that is what is critical about this. So, so again, earlier on, before you came, Richie, I did talk about Starbucks. You know what Starbucks is? That Starbex thing is a, is a form of write-off, which the Kenya government has been doing, and it favors certain people who, who do that borrowing. That is what that is the, going to be the fate of the hustler thing, and that's why I was telling you May, again before you came in, I did tell you that that chaka was here. I did say that uh, this hustler limit is not the same all over the country. The limit depends on which part of the country you are working, you are from. For example, today, if you go and apply for, for the Asla Fund, which if you are, happen to be in Seaya, I can assure you not get more than 500. But I know of people who are, who are used to work with in the past. Two of, two of them had applied for the Asla limit when they were in Nyeri. They were surprised as to the limit they were able to access. The minimum was 1,500. <laughs> a gentleman I used to work with, he is not from Nyerere. He was there on an assignment, but the fact that he applied for the hustler facility when he was in Nyerere, he was shocked to himself. His limit was 1,500. Yet when he was in Nairobi, Utawala. <laughs> It was 500. <laughs> yeah. is it anyway, the, anyway, that is the, the, the other politics of it. 
But eventually, what is going to happen to the Hustler fan? You see this Hustler thing. These people are budgeting to write off five to seven billion a year of the Hustler thing. So in other words, when we tell your people, hey, anybody who has borrowed Osirudeshe, you are not telling them anything new. They knew you would not be returning. But that's not what they are after. What they are after is collecting data and collecting transactions on your statement, which they are going to use to arrive at this 2.8 trillion. Eventually, they are going to end up with a formula. Okay, so let me say a word. The informal sector. Based on Hello. your transactions, averaging your transactions, it earns the presumptive tax. Kusel, yes, I think that you are right on every point. You just uh, like you, like you were saying earlier, is they pay everything for uh, 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 New Mexico. I mean, what about the economy of uh, you know, like California or New York? You go to Alaska. If you stay there over a year, they start paying you money back. So it is that in Kenya, the, what you are explaining is very clear. Is the the, the 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 mingling of all those factors in economic theory to know that if you give somebody from Kisi hundred dollars, they will pay hundred dollars back. If you give somebody from uh, Migori hundred dollars, they might give you two dollars. It's all kinds of stuff that they're doing in Kenya today. Just yes, uh, as you can give an example. Okay, final example. When Obama became president, the U.S. was losing like $800,000, I mean, uh, people, uh, jobs a day. But how he, 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 he did that, he re of course, my American print money, but he convinced the parliament, and he, uh, of course, only nearly all of them was the Democrats that voted for it. But guess what? Within two years, he gave them four years. He gave us stimulation of four years to pay back out, to change the economy, whatever, whatever. But in two years, he had paid all the companies back. But the Democrats, if the Republicans had won, all the companies like General Motors, all these big companies that pay very well, they could have gone under because they wanted to sell them and then, you know, start making the cars from Mexico, Canada, anywhere. So it is an economic theory. It's who wins the presidency, what time, when. You know, all these factors, we have to be live to them and uh, know that, if we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. That's part of life. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Penny, Penny I, I agree with most of the things that you're saying. Uh, however, there's one thing that I don't agree with, and that is uh, the kind of uh, groundwork that this government is putting in place into place to try and raise revenue. I mean, these things were discussed before. These are things that have been tried before and failed. Unfortunately, this government right now is giving us numbers from textbooks. You cannot plan the budget of an economy like Kenya with numbers that don't exist. Kusel. You cannot give us a budget, a proposal, a budget proposal, which you call presumptive, expecting that at a given at, at a given point in time you'll have collected such data and uh, you know try to extrapolate how much money you are going to to uh, to tax Kenyans so that you can do a b c d it's not possible it is either we are living beyond our means as a country and that is why i'm saying here sometimes when you look at what william ruto speaks and what william ruto does these are two different things very different because on one side we have a government that is complaining about a ballooning wage bill on the other side we have an executive that is willing to expand you know the uh, number of uh, uh, ministries in terms of permanent secretary appointments so that they can accommodate cronies we have an executive that is so willing to travel across the country almost every weekend you know to celebrate their victory in terms of thanksgiving and prayers the kind of money that this government is using every day to organize all these events and the bloated government the pss the css that are going to be appointed very soon shows us that this government is not prepared to cut down the wage bill 
seriously. And you've seen right there, the video that I played, almost over half percent uh, of, the, of the revenue collected in the Republic of Kenya is consumed by the executive. If we truly did not admire what uh, Uhuru Kenyatta did as a president, then we should be going the opposite direction of what he did. William Ruto's government is completely different in terms of trying to, you know, uh, cut down the wage bill and what they do. So you said very clearly here, if, 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 if we can raise 2.8 trillion shillings from the informal sector, then I don't see why the president should be complaining about uh, a broke, uh, them, you know, the deputy president complaining about in, inheriting a broke, uh, a broke uh, government. I assume these people, Kuseo, how are watu ni watu ambao wa machine wa watatua pesa wapi? And what they are trying to do is they are giving us numbers in advance so that when KRA fails to reach the target that they have set, they can have an excuse to go outside and borrow money. We know very well, everybody knows very well that the Kenyan government cannot survive from the taxes that are paid by the Kenyan people. Number one, the percentage of Kenyans that are, have a livable wage. Wale watu ambao wanapata pesa ambazo wanafanya kazi, wanafanya biashara, na wanaeza lipa ushuru ni watu wachache sana. Majority of Kenyans, over 60%, especially the youth, you know, the stronger generation, do not have a job. Hawana kazi. They have no means ya sustain. So, we cannot be telling people ya kwamba, tutachukua data kutoka kwa hawa watu ambao hawana kazi kuseo perhaps we uko na mtu uko Kenya unalipia school fees na unamtumia mpaka pesa ya pocket money kwa simu this is what the government is targeting uh, how uh, sustainable uh, is that richi let me let me tell you the bombshell which is awaiting these people you see this so called presumptive uh, tax they are trying to average uh, uh, transactions which which according to them are authentic from the safaricom database now you will be surprised that uh, i don't know whether the, 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 the likes of d have done all this these people have overmined information from safaricom and and it is it is it is a bit uh, disheartening that serious government call them economies can bank so much, bank so much on the information on the M Safaricom main pesa and want to treat this as, as if they are economic activities. I don't know whether you have heard what is going on now. People are so worried that just money floating around in M pesa, somebody is trying to view this as being business transactions for heaven's sake. Now, some people have been arguing that most of these are just onward transfer on onward movement of funds. Now, to respond to that, they are saying that they are not saying that all of them are uh, business transactions. And uh, I, I overheard from reliable sources that somebody is saying that in fact, when they when they look at your MPSA statement, Richie that 500 or some maybe some cash which came from me to you is being treated as a transaction as a business transaction from me to you and they are saying that okay we are not saying that all the transactions are business transaction we are we are going to assume that on average and yes that is why they are trying to rely on this call it 0.02 percent of all the transactions that you have done in a month, let's just take that we we, we take a tax of 0 0.02. So, so in other words, maybe half of them are business transactions which attract tax, others are not, which may be just money onward or being passed from one person to another. But to assume that, because it is presumptive, to assume that on all in MPSA accounts, is a bit seriously misleading to an extent whereby you are budgeting 2.8 trillion. 
simply because from Safaricom, you can mine a database of 33 million accounts. And that in, in call it in a month, they are handling or moving around how many billions of shillings. So you call it, I may talk about 0.2%, but 0.2% of 900 billion in a month, or call it 1.9 million, sorry, trillion in a month only. To you, that looks like very good tax revenue, isn't it? Which you didn't have earlier on. And somebody was trying to argue that they are broadening the tax base. To them, that is something which, according to them, they didn't have because the informal sector was not in the tax bracket. Now, on a serious note, well, time will tell. Hmm? Time will tell. Somebody keeps saying that you should be paying your right share of tax. Surely your right share of tax cannot be represented by the transaction on your m -Pesa account. Should, should it? <laughs> I don't know whether so, so many people are going to start using m -Pesa. It is that is have, have they have they asked themselves that is also a possibility. You'll find so many people now abandoning Mpesa as as a uh, that as a way of uh, uh, cash movement. Yeah. Well, anyway, time will tell. But somebody is seriously misled. If serious economists will go that Mpaka they put it on paper. 2.8 2 trillion is not a small amount of money. Eh? <laughs> well, anyway, chapter. <laughs> Your M Pesa transactions are going to attract 0.2% tax per month. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Kenyan chapter. Yes, I want to say something. Um, I've been listening to you guys. Yeah, you're contributing a lot. Um, and Kenyans, I hope they are hearing. But this is a, a way of uh, crippling everybody in Kenya so that you come to your knees. If they are going to be taxing people who are struggling even to get food on the table, how do you expect them to survive? This is a, a, a government that uh, talked about um, state capture. They are the one who captured the, the state. They talked that uh, they are going uh, to Watalima, ndiyo watu wapate chakula. Nyinyi ndiyo mtalimo. Walisema hakuna pesa. There was money because how are they managing themselves going all these places they are going? And all these things that they are doing, we know they are using money. Um, in the circle, I'm about to me onge abari ya mauaji. Wow, wa meua. Wa me onge abari ya dams. Dams, how many promises are we going to get? There were dams which were to be even built during his uh, deputizing the previous government. Nothing was done, and he was the one facilitating that. Barabara zimesimamishwa, zilikuwa ziendele. Um, this is a godly man, and we have come to find that he is not a godly man. What are you expecting from this? Nothing. In fact, even if we keep on talking about this government, unless we do the unusual thing, get them out of that office, we will be always talking about them. Because what they are doing, they want every Kenyan to go to their knees. They don't want anybody to raise their head. They want us crippled so that we can listen and do as they say. It is hard. It is becoming, it is coming to that situation. So Kenyans don't sleep. Let's get up and do something. We are not going to be crippled just to be put down by somebody who just stole somebody's election. And then we listen to him. He will do nothing. Why is he milking everybody? How can he transact money that I have sent to my child? How can they start milking people who don't have even food to eat? It is saddening. 
And these people, they think that they are, they are, they are doing the work of a, of a government. This is a mafia. They are killing people. They are finishing people. How, 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 how much money are we manufacturing so that they can have a share and I, I, I remain with some? The life, the cost of living is very high. Where do I get this money to pay all this? Where do they tax me? And why should they tax me? If only I'm um, maybe having this money from, maybe I have gone to the, to the shamba. I have done the best I can. When I sell a gunia of maize, somebody is coming there after me for taxation. No, chapter, chapter. I think you, 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 you didn't. They are, they are using your as borrowing to judge your business transactions. But when they are going to Pesa, what does that mean? Maybe somebody is paying me for that gunia I have sold through yeah. Pesa. Uh, uh, is that correct? Asla is for business. But when they say they are going to Pesa, are they so pay, going? Pay tax. You, you, you are using Mpesa to trade, and they are the ones who have lent you the money to trade. So when I'm selling my, my maize to somebody and send me through Mpesa, are they going to tax me that money? Well, well tax tax comes from businesses. So I of course, small. <laughs> of course I'm doing business by then, and I'm selling my one gunia of maize. That is business. Are they going to tax me from that? Precisely, that they are saying that after they have collected the, the, the data, the information from your MPSA transaction, after a while, they'll come up with an average. That is what Richie was trying to say. And across the country, they, they are targeting 2.8 billion, sorry, trillion. Why are they targeting? from Wanainchi as if we are the one who have the money. The government has the money. And if the money is not floating to Wanainchi, how do they get the money? Uh, uh, right now, they are calling you the informal sector. Now, this is the government you have. So it's your government. Deal with it. <laughs> I, you know, Kusel, you know, Kusel, um, my problem is you cannot, even if they are giving these 500 shillings to everybody, this is a kind of taking your other money that you get through the data that they have collected from you. So anything else that you'll be putting on that account, it will be accounted for the government to tax. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. So you that see, means you, you see, you see, you see, chapter what I said earlier for them to access your in person transaction that in itself was some kind of a fraud, according to me. It is not right, but nevertheless, they have managed to do it that way. And you did, you did hear, for example, when Chaka mentioned that uh, him he has tried it four times. Now, every time it appears on your in person transaction. It, to them, they read it as some, call it a business transaction. And uh, according to them, they have been at pains on how to tax the informal sector. Now, they think they have been able to, to arrive at some something they can use to average how you should be taxed. Remember, in the past, the informal sector have not been paying tax this, this much. And if you check the, the budget estimate, somebody is trying to say that they are, they are actually trying to expand the tax bracket by roping you in. Let me ask you, um, Kuseo, mm. if I have, okay, let me, let's say my child have taken that 500 shillings and uh, he didn't do anything with it. He just used it and then and because his data has gone to the government. And then my my son doesn't have money, but I, I, I send him money to for use. It will go the same number that he used because he took the money from the, the government. And then I, he uses that because it is pocket money. Then I may send another money because definitely somebody wants some money to keep up with the life of 
whatever he is. Now, does it mean the government now will come and assess those monies that I have sent several times because already they have all the credentials of that person or the, the information of that person and average to charge taxes on that? You see, Chef Toh, I agree with you. The, the challenge we have here is that these are some of the things we have been trying to point out about the, the, the fakeness of this so-called hustler thing. Now, you can use, first of all, they are getting the information from it, in, in, which information itself is fake, as you have explained. You take, for example, a student who all he has is a phone and he has an MPS account. He's receiving, even call it, call it pocket money, isn't it? Now, yes. somebody want to treat this as business transaction. Business. Yeah, you mm -hmm. see, that's where they go wrong. And that is why it is high time the Kenyan public revolt about this as a thing to begin with. Don't you see? So it That is, is my Kenyans. question. Uh, there will come a time when the Kenyans themselves have to come up against blazing and reject the, the Asla thing. And, and that is why I indicated here earlier that one of the things you are going to see, the safari comes are going to start suffering because so many people are going to stop using their MPS as product. Don't you see that coming? I can see that coming. The MPS definitely, if, if, people are yeah, going to start with the blowing. Definitely, because if that is where the, the, the government is putting their hands and start milking somebody who is not even working, not doing business, you are receiving pocket money and yeah. your pocket money is being taxed. Being where, taxed. Do, where are we going? They are, they are taxing students' pocket money. It is, it is, not, it is not right. Yeah. Now that is the question people should ask themselves and come to think and if uh, this is when you say that uh, if Ruto tells you don't follow this road you're gonna fall in a in a ditch follow that road because he is always the opposite you understand what I mean I, I get I get what you mean I get what you mean and but uh, Makiadi I, want, I just wanted to, this Imaneno e, e, uh, Jebukati assassination and, uh, and the issue of the inquiry is going to be very, very challenging. As, as I said here, the organization which that, that, who did that investigation using the ASLAB uh, dozier, that son, sorry, the whistleblowers dozier, are see people who are in business. It is like you have you have engaged KPMG, you are internal auditors. Now they are they are brought in some external auditors to go over certain business activities that took place. Maybe there was forgeries, there were frauds, and all of you. And you have engaged them. The only thing is that the, the way they obtained the data they have used for this investigation was through uh, whistleblowing. And whistleblowing is a known thing and it is allowable internationally it is acceptable now that is the challenge that uh, that uh, the, the, the this government is now facing because they are trying to say that uh, chebukati was to be murdered for doing xyz now maybe you should pray that they start that inquiry then this information will be validly acceptable in that that inquiry to prove whether chebukati is a hero that he claims he is or what so they are in a fix. <laughs> you see, uh, Kuseo, there, there are things that don't add up. There are things that don't add up. Before I welcome uh, Godfrey to, to speak. There are, things, there are things that don't add up. Before Chebukati went to announce the results at Bomas, we were told somebody was trying to kidnap him. You know, uh, make him disappear so that we have another person that can step in as a temporary chairman or chair lady or something and, uh, you know, announce somebody else. We have had people, witnesses, including the Archbishop of SEK, saying very well, categorically, that before Chebukati went to Bomas of Kenya, they passed through his home to pray for him. 
he called people, he called the clergy to his house in Nairobi to pray for him so that he can, you know, <laughs> gain courage to go to uh, Bombers of Kenya and announce results. That is a story we've had. And then there's another story we come to learn later that Chebukati was protected by the current president's uh, security. Even as he was going to announce the results, alikuwa na chungwa na na walinzi wa the former wakati alikuwa deputy president walikuwa na mchunga hadi ya wakati ambapo alienda ku announce uh, results. Na tuliona hiyo, we saw that. Hata tuliona bombers of Kenya. So I I want to I want you to ask yourself as we continue to contemplate on this so-called circus of Chebukati getting assassinated, being kidnapped or whatever and getting assassinated, as we continue to, you know, ask ourselves these tough questions, how did the deputy president at that time get knowledge to an extent that he was able to extend or lend his security to Chebukati. What interest did he have at that particular moment? Did we have a predetermined elections, uh, election even before the results were announced? And that is why Ruto had to provide his security to Chebukati. These, yeah, are, things but, that, these are things that should, we should be asking ourselves. But Ked, before you came, we did, we did say here that uh, you, you see, the current resident in the past he had been playing victim all over but he, but, but, he went to chatham house was it in the us where he was saying how the elect the government is planning to rig the election now as as uh Kepto, i've just said eh, it is always the opposite of what he says he's actually the one who was planning to rig the elections and uh, in the beginning personally i did say here that uh, if there is the deep end of deep state, that is where he was. In other words, he was deeper than all the other, you could imagine deep state, so-called deep state. So everything as you, you, are, as you are predicting was, was all planned. All right, my friend Black here reminds me that uh, the deputy DP has access to intelligence. I'm almost out. Uh, Black just how DP and Akwanga na intelligence uh, briefing. Lakini William Ruto mwenye ndi alikuja kwa TV akatuambia yeye hakuna mtu anampatianga intelligence briefing ya ya, ya deputy kama deputy president. Na akatuambia kwamba alipiga simu, alipigia eh, mkubwa wa security wa inaitwa intelligence simu mara mingi sana. Amempigia simu mara mingi. He said it. There was no answer. Exactly. So, wakati unakuja kutuambia hapa, you know, we should reason from the point ambayo nyinyi munatuletea. I mean, if you tell us ya kwamba you don't get security briefing, na we unakuja kuniulize ya kwamba ni mesahau deputy president apatanga security briefing. Yeye mwenye alikuja akasema hana briefing, so inafau tuambie wakati chebukati alikuwa nataka kuwa kidnap, ni nani aliambia ruto ya kwamba chebukati anataka kuwa kidnap ya mtumie security? Unless chebukati na ruto walikuwa mepanga hiki tukitambu sana, hata kabla uchaguzi ifanyike. Apana tubeba na mnaio. Godfrey, karibu. Thank you, Makani, Makadio. So, nikitambo sana kukuona, wana. Mwisho, mwisho likuwa wakati kwa na discuss mamba Chepukati na Dio looked something. Mama Chepto na Chaka, Barizen. Okay, Makadio, on the issue of intelligence, I think we have to blame ourselves. In fact, we should blame our president, who, who, our former president, Uhuru. Pasabu, wakati, walikuja waka disagree with the deputy president, that was the time when Kata, your communication, now your deputy president Kabisa. But in a, in a kind of what, the things were happening in secret. Yeah, pengine kwa na dangani yoku bevitu kwa na happening in secret. Now you, jamani kwa intelligence ya kila kitu, ana ungea na kina chabukati, ana panga mambozake. Ruta ani ukura meka tu na kunywa pumbi akilewa. You know, we have to blame our, our, ourselves. Who jamani to mess sana? Our president Uhuru, ali to mess sana. Okay, there's something I wanted to talk about. Kusawa mesema on the issue of. Chebukati being adopted Auliwe. This is the propaganda about Ruto and You know, Ruto, with the people wana mzunguka, what and what are propaganda? I'm talking about another fake, a fake lawyer, this called Ambrose, some Ambrose somebody, a fake lawyer from 
Nyanza anakuja on live tv anasema kuwa the time chebukati alikuwa anaenda kutangaza results kwanza alikaa kwa nyumba yake akasema ameshindwa kutoka anapitia weda weda somebody ambrose somebody ambrose weda ya he talked on the live tv akasema kuwa chebukati called religious people from his house wakuja wamuombe kwa sababu alikuwa ameshindwa kuenda alafu na akaongeza uongo kuwa the time walitoka kwake walitumia gari ya au au religious people religious elders ndio walitumia gari yake na on the way wakiwa wanaenda bomas kuna gari moja sports range rover ilikuwa inajaribu kuwa block kila time and, and he's talking on live tv na anajua kabisa ni uongo anadanganya and these are the people ambao wamezunguka huyo president huyo president ruto on my side okay on my view at not my side on my view we should not be discussing right now anything kuhusiana na government yake i think right now we have results the two results ambao tunaamini vilifanyika and we know that that Ruto hakushinda kura Raila alishinda kura so i think we should give people hope and we shall now we should now discuss on what what for and what will happen wakati uh, wakati Raila anakuja what will happen what next for Raila because i don't think we can continue kuweka government kwa kiti kutokifikia kwa kuna hope but there is no hope with this government the government came in wamemaliza kila kitu wametoa all subsidy there's nothing we can we are, we are, we are waiting for this government to do to kwa wananchi wa kawaida there's no interest in him ambao itasaidia wananchi wa kawaida i think this is the time we need to find ways to tell people hata kama itabidi tuangamane okay i i don't advocate for violence but nimefika wakati nimesema iwe liwalo but i think we need to take back our our victory hakuna vile mtu atatuibia kura akuje aharibu economy ya Kenya in fact right now kila mtu analia unajaribu kufanya business hakuna pesa unapata Okeka pesa kwa account unashangaa pesa imepotea tu. Yaani hata hakuna pesa kwa mfuko. Na it's only three months. Hata ijamaliza miezi ine and things are not working. Everything is stuck kwa sababu ya government ya ukora ya uongo. I think it's time we need to rise up. Kama ni revolution we need to force Raila we take back our victory. Tusiendelee na ku, ku discuss mambo ya government. Ni government yetusaidii hii imekuja kuibia watu hii government. Haya, thank you Godfrey. Wacha ni chaka ume drop karibu uh, unmute unmute chaka unmute apa uh, uh, atukusikii ama ni mimi mnamsikia kweli yeah, yeah sound system ni si poa chaka sijui sauti leo iko na shida gani bwana upande wako messi msikii bwana apande kwa huo mnazi uko hapo <laughs> <laughs> Chaka hatukusikii bwana leo shida ni nini bwana ndugu yangu Aya awacha ajaribu kutoka kwanza hapa utatoka alafu rudi Naonekana kuna shida ya connection Ngoja dakika mo Anglican Church Archbishop Jackson Olesapit had been in touch with Chebukati. Very tense. Uh, he was just walking across the sitting room. Uh, the wife and the daughter were in distress and uh, all what we did was we never asked the details what was happening but uh, we can see the agitation. So we prayed and then uh, he said uh, we can now go to Bomas together. He was he was in need of that prayer. This was a man who had spent several hours of the previous night at the Bomas of Kenya in meetings. A man who had been informed of an INSAC delegation seeking his audience. That was our major concern and even our major what we were asking ourselves, you know, at this hour. Uh, why why was he not in in in, in Bomas? But uh, because he did not know the details, he did not disclose to us any details. Uh, all what we did is to offer prayer Unasikia unasikia hiyo story unknown scripts vile hiyo story inageuzwa kila si huyo ni archbishop anasema yeye aliitwa kwenda kufanya maombi kwa Chebukati 
Alafu wakati walimuombea he was in a bit of distress na baada ya kumuombea wakaandamana pamoja kuenda Bomas. But the bishop is not uh, very honest to tell you about why walienda huko. Yeye anasema Chebukati aliwapigia simu akawaambia ninahitaji maombi. So kujeni kwangu muombe. And this is a person who was supposed to be at Bomas telling the results na wale commissioners wengine. So sisi tunalaumu our commissioners tunawaita the Cherera 4. Walikuja wakasema sisi hatukubaliani na haya matokeo ambayo Chebukati amekuja nayo tukawaona wabaya. Sasa saa hii Chebukati hata hakukuwa bomas wakati Tallinn ilikuwa inafanyika. Yeye aliitisha maombi na baada ya kuombewa akaenda kutangaza uchaguzi. Unataka uniambie hizo results zenye alikuwa anaenda kutangaza alikuwa ametoa wapi? Can I say something? Can I say something Makiadi, please? Yes, yes. This guy was in distress. Kwa sababu hakujua ni nini itatokea akienda kufanya hiyo maajabu ya ulimwengu alikuwa anatarajia kufanya. That is the distress he had. If he had it. If he had the distress, it's what is going to happen to me once I announce this and as I take this away from the winner and announce it in the bombers of Kenya. Am I going to be killed? Will there be fight? fight? What will happen? That is the distress I would say. It is my opinion, Makiad. Yes, uh, Godfrey. To add something to Mama Chepto, to confirm the same distress, Kumbuka vene nani walisema de ada kinagulie. After releasing releasing the results wanasema walitoka wote watatu wawili watatu wakaenda kujificha on a known place na kwenda kujificha walizima simu yao wakacha bombers sasa pale bali walienda walikuwa watu wanaangalia tv kuona kama watu watauana ama watu watauana you know and when the situation inaendelea unaona tu kabisa walikuwa wamepanga hiki kitu ni kitu kimeshapangwa tayari chebukati mwenyewe anakuja with the results ambazo hajijulikani zimetoka wapi we had an extra day ambao ilikuwa akuje akijua kama kuna pressure ange wakulu wote down akasema basi tulie paka kesho we discuss we agree on this on this results kama ziko sawa tutangaze kama ziko sawa tuone tutafanya nini but why was he in a hurry kutangaza yet we had another extra day ya kutangaza mbona watu wakaacha wakazima simu zao wakaziwacha bombers wakaenda kujificha on a known place alafu wanaangalia kama watu wanauana ama watu wanauana wakaka for 3 days wakiona kuna mtu anauana ndo anatoka sasa You know and the, the script on Isha kabisa hapa Bando Zang Bando Zang ni kidogo naomba nichangie yeah, nitoke yeah, yeah. Endelea 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 Unajua Makiadi na ndugu zangu hapa ukweli ni kwamba hakuna haja ya kuvembeleza hii serikali kwa sababu hii si serikali imechaguliwa na wananchi na kutibidisha hilo ni kwamba hii ni serikali ambayo imeweza kufanya mipango yake imefanya mipango kuweza kupata uongozi kwa msitegemee hata siku moja kwamba mwananchi hapa atakuwa a, 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 kuna mtu anaweza mfikiria hilo tusijidanganye kabisa hapa kwa sababu yule anafikiria wananchi ni yule ambaye pingine amepigwa na hao wananchi lakini kama ni mtu alifanya kwa mipango yake akapata uongozi kwa njia yake huwezi mpangia kwamba afikiria wananchi kwamba kuna nini wala kuna taifa ya atafanya kile kwa kataona ni sahihi kwa sababu uongozi anajua vyenye alipata dharuba aliyopata na ujio wake mwenyewe na ndiposa tunapitia haya tumepitia ya GMO tukayashuhudia na hapo ndio lilikuwa kwanza kwanza hii serikali inaonyesha kwamba haina haja na mkenya wa kawaida ni bora afe ni bora aingie magonjwa lakini wao wa sustain na wabaki pale kwa niaba yao ya kurudisha pesa zao na kutengeneza mapesa kwa hapa tukusema hapa tunalumbana tunafanya nini tunazungumzia hapa hakuna cha msingi ni mkenya azinduke na tuhakikisha hawa watu tumeondoa katika huu uongozi ndivyo tutakuwa maana Maki hadi kidonda kidonda kuachana na inzi ni kidonda kupona lakini kama kidonda hakitakuwa kimepona basi inzi usitegemee kwamba litakuwa mbale so kuhusisi wa Kenya kuhakikisha tumeondoka katika hii hali ni kuhakikisha hii serikali tumiotoa kwa sababu haina imani na mwananchi wa kawaida na ndio ndipo wamembebesha huu mzigo na bado watamkandamiza kama nilivyotangulia kuzungumza taingia juzi kwamba lengo la hizi serikali iko hapa ni kuhakikisha mwananchi amenyamazishwa kabisa kadri anavyokuwa na shida zake na njaa zake ndivyo ambavyo ataweza kutumili kutumiwa vibaya zaidi 
na hata kuwa na sauti ya kuzungumza kwa hiyo haina haja tukae mahali ambapo tunaona tunakoelekezwa siko tunaanza kubambanya bambanya wo hakuna cha kujadili hili na hili na hili kwa sababu tayari hii serikali tumeiona taingia ingia hapa katika huu uongozi wake haina imani na mwananchi haijachaguliwa na mwananchi na ndipo haina haja na mwananchi haja ni kuhakikisha ni njia gani wameweza kuhakikisha pesa zimeingia kwao wamethibiti kila mahali kwa sababu ni jambo gani la waibu hili makiadi kama mimi nitakuwa nauza akiji biashara changu pingine nasafirisha dagaa huko Mombasa nimelipwa huko kwa sababu mteja yuko huko nani nani mtajiri wangu yuko huko amenitumia pesa alafu pesa ile ile imekatwa katikati hapo ya hewa kwa sababu imekatwa ushuru ya nini tuliona wapi na yanatendeka haya inchi gani na utenda unyama kama huu mwananchi huyo huyo umemwapanisha vitu vyakula viko juu harama maisha iko juu umemwadhibu kwa hilo tena bado unamwadhibu hata ile pesa anayotaka kufanya nayo biashara bado uikate vile vile bora tu ile mradi ameingia kwa kwa mpesa hii ni jambo la waibu so wa Kenya hapa sijui huwa tunashufikiria wale wanafagilia hizi serikali ni nini haswa kina kubenefit hapo ni nini haswa kinakutia matumaini katika hii serikali ya hawa 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 mabepari na wasio kuwa na roho ya utu wala wasiofikiria hii Kenya mahali inaelekea ni wapi wako radhi kuhakikisha kila mtu amekandamizwa hapa wasiwe na sauti kabisa so tunaiekea nini hapa ni sisi wote tujio bangoja tuikatae hii hii serikali na licha kwamba kuna Raila kuwe na Raila kusiwe na Raila but wananchi wenyewe tujitokeze haswa kwa sababu tayari dalili kila kitu tumekiona hapa so hata tukishinda tukiadhi hapa na kuijadili kila jaa, kila mahali wanapo itasaidia miaka inazidi siku zinazidi mwisho wa siku tutakuja kushangaa wamefika 2027 wameweka watu wao hapo kwa ABC watu ambao watawafeva kama wale ambao wameshatoka sasa hivi katika 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 kaka wawalu wana jemkati wenye mistafu lakini tumeiona kwamba hii serikali haijachaguliwa na mwananchi na wanalifahamu hili leo kama wewe haijachagula litumia mbinu zake akapanga mipango na kinachibukata kingizwa kwenye uongozi wewe mwananchi atakufikiria kwa ni kukuhadaa kujitia kwamba yupo na kukupa hadi za uongo nitakutengenezea hiki nitatengeneza hiki lakini hakuna kitu kitakaa zaidi ya hii serikali wanamulika mahali pesa ipo so wakituambia hapa pesa hakuna wananashangaa sana hizi thanksgiving za miaka mzima za miezi mitatu mizima zisizoisha safari kwani ni kuzungumza tu wa Kenya walikuwa shanza kulumba doki dogo safari zimepunguka lakini je katika walivyoingia kwenye uongozi ni safari ngapi wenye walienda pili Kenya inajulikana kwa wizi na anayejulikana yuko pale mwizi sasa usitegemee hata mataifa mengine watupe pesa yao hapa wakati wanaelewa kabisa ni nani wenye yuko pale mwenye kuchupa pesa yake hapa unless yuko nene dili na hapa Kenya yuko na mpango na hapa Kenya ndio hiyo ndio taifa litaweza kusaidia hii Kenya lakini haswa mataifa ya akili zao timamu wanaoelewa hii Kenya na nani yuko pale hawezi pia na misaada yao kwa hiyo watarudi back to wananchi wakisema kwamba ndio wamekandamizwa wao wamelipa kila kitu hiyo harama maisha ndio yani hakuna kitu tunategemea hapa tunaitegemea kwamba tutapumzishwa mzigo hata mwananchi hapa so hakuna haja kukaa hapa hakuna haja tukubembeleze Raila akuje hapa aanze kuzungumza kwa sababu ni sisi wananchi wenyewe tukatae na tuondoe huu uongozi wa kidhalimu huu uongozi wa kidiktata tukatae kabisa kwa kauli moja hatutaki ondokeni katika ofisi tuangalie mtu ambaye ataweza kusimama hapo ni bora haswa hata tuwe leader by military turudi huko kwa hizo nchi zingine bana kumi kuliko watu na mtu ambaye ni muongo tuwe na mtu ambaye hana utu hana roho hata chembe chembe ya utu makia ni mimi nitakwamia pale kwa sababu ninasikia kitu ndani ya moyo wangu kabisa hatuwezi fanyishwa biashara kama malumbukeni wa Kenya bwana tena bado kwa hapo unasimama eh ruto ru, unashangilia nini tuna nini aswa kwa hivyo hapa kuna cha kujadili mambo mengi ni hapa ni kuhamasishana wananchi tujitokeze tuseme hatutaki maana Raila ndio huyu anayetumiwa kama ata kuzungumza hiki kashapelekwa mahali nyingine akitaka kuzungumza kashapelekwa huko anatumiwa 
sasa ni wakati wa sisi wananchi wenyewe tuzungumze tujitokeze we Raila kusona Raila wale watatu support watu support wale watasema hapana lakini uongo hapa ni lazima kichimbike maana hawa watu tumeshawaruhusu tayari washaanza kukita mizizi maana kama ni mahakama washateka kama ni security washateka kama ni pale ametu washateka hakuna vinyambavyo ambavyo sisi wananchi kama hatutaungana kwa pamoja kabila zote hapa tunaweza ngoa hii tunaweza ngoa hii tunaweza ngoa hii nani hii ni hii serikali mamlakani so ni nguvu yetu umoja wetu na kuhakikisha tunafikiria ni wapi tumetoka na ni wapi tunaenda lakini msitegemee itakuwa na imani na mwananchi wa kawaida mwananchi wa kawaida atanyonywa tu na mkenya atabebeshwa mzigo atake astake maana lengo la hao watu ni kufikiria mahali pesa ipo walipora na watapora na kwa sababu wako katika mamlaka hamuwezi wafanya chochote mimi ni kwa mie pale As, as, asante chaka unajua saa nyingine ninasikia watu wakiongea hapa inasemekana that it was clear ndugu yetu Charles anasema it was clear that uh, to all that Chebukati including Chebukati that the government wanted to capture him at that time it was uh, getting help and protection from all uh, any corner so if Ruto knew he had won he could tell his guards mi, mi nataka kuuliza Godfrey na uh, wenzangu hapa kama serikali kama serikali ilikuwa na nia ya kumkamata Chebukati. Serikali ingeshindwa, serikali if the government was interested in abducting Chebukati, the government or the so called deep state yenye tulikuwa tunaambiwa deep state. Do you want to tell me ingeshindwa? So people people should come here. Watu wakikuja hapa wajaribu kutuambia vitu ambavyo haiwezi ku make sense. Tunafaa kuwakataza. It is very very clear ya kwamba Uhuru Kenyatta was a hands off president in terms of trying to force Chebukati to announce any any post, any person as a as a winner. Uhuru Kenyatta expected the election it and you also wengine mi mi saingine na unanga watu wana laumu Uhuru Kenyatta ati alituuza ama nini. Godfrey wacha ni kueleze namna hii hata ukisema ya kwamba Uhuru Kenyatta alikuwa labda na kula zile vitu zake. Chebukati kama alikuwa amekuwa compromised even without uhuru kenyata ama with uhuru kenyata's influence kama alikuwa compromised angetangaza ule mtu ambaye amemcompromise na wakati rafael them personally kwa sababu these are people ambao walikuwa natembea kwa manyumba za watu wakifanya waki, waki, kitu inaitwa bidding the highest bidder ikiti ilikuwa inauzwa na akina makiadi ya network oh chaka naona makiadi network imepotea but there's something about bacteria alikuwa anasema kuhusu kuwa tunalaumu uhuru kwa uhuru alikuwa na kule lekti yake chaka mi i know very well uhuru angetusaidia pale wakati alikuwa asha you know he was the first person ambaye alijua results okay makadi endelea naona merudi una, unajua kuna shida tunakuanga nayo hapa Geoffrey Geoffrey jana tulizungumza mjadala la wote pale kama unakumbuka kuhusu na ile swala la uhuru na nikakwambia kabla hata haya urudi tu pale fute ile tasra uhuru alivyokuwa ameandamwa kwamba yeye atanataka kurulo hii country akiwa nje na si wengine wenye kuzungumza ni hawa tumbo kwanza hawa na kabla ya hayo kulikuwa kuna maneno ambayo alikuwa kuna romance nyingi zikuwa zinamwandama uhuru vibaya mno light kitu ambacho kilimnyamazisha nilikwambia jana uhuru hana roho ya jiwa alikuwa na roho anako na roho nyama sawia na sisi tu sasa inafikia mahali ukasema wacha kiende kiende tu mimi wacha madam nishamaliza nipeane uongozi nikatafute sehemu mpumzike na ndivyo alivyofanya uhuru haimaanishi kwamba yeye alikuwa amemsaliti Raila wala alikuwa na mpango na Ruto hapana ilifikia mahali aseme tu madamu tamu yangu umeisha na nashukuru Kenya nimebeba wacha iende wananchi watajiamlia kama ni kuwaonya niliwaonya 
nikawaambia huu ndio mkono ambao unafaa na huu si mkono ambao unafaa juu yeye amekaa hapo amekaa na deputy waka alikuwa amemsoma amemwangalia tabia zake mipango yake na mwisho wa siku alipomwacha ili naye apate pumzi angalau ya kuzungumza ndivyo vilivyotokea hayo yote kwa sababu uhuru wakati wa 2013 mpaka 2017 hakuwa na sauti sauti ilikuwa ya ruto na ndio wakati corruption ilizidi katika hii nchi katika hii taifa pumzi ya uhuru ilipatikana wakati yeye alipojoin hands na Raila Odinga ndipo alipotokeza sasa anaweza zungumza kwa conference ukamsikia uhuru kweli kumbe anazungumza lakini alikuwa amenyamazishwa so walipo achana kwa sababu ya kutoelewana ya yeye kila mtu na njia yake deputy ana hii rais ana hii hakuna pana siwezi haribu nchi wakati iko na tension na kwa kweli hakika najua wazi aswa kwa mimi sijashinda samadamu sijashinda mimi wacha niungane na ndugu yangu nikifanye naye kazi na kama kweli inawezekana tu daribu ku drive huu uongozi utoke katika kabla hii uende kwa mwingine ili kila mkenya at least ahisi kwamba na yeye pia alizungumzia naweza kuwa wakati ni safari ya kabla nyingine kuongoza katika ile taifa uhuru mwenyewe kabisa kazungumza mambo ambayo ilikuwa yanamkera haswa deputy wake ambaye sasa hivi ni 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 ni, 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 ni. anasemekana ni rais wetu so kwa kweli uhuru mimi siwezi mlaumu kwa chochote kile hana roho ya jiwe uhuru ana roho ya nyama inafikia mahali hata wewe ndugu yangu Geoffrey useme basi madamu mimi nishazungumza nishafanya yango mm-mm, wacha iende sasa wakenya wenyewe ndio watajionea sasa kwa wale walio wana wameshangizwa wa, 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 wa propaganda ya kuona Ruto he is the best wengi wakawa wanaimba hususa hawa vijana bodaboda boda, mama mboga sasa hivi kila mtu anauona sasa uchafu kwa sababu kama ni manifesto ile manifesto yao hakuna kitu ambacho wanaifuata ni mambo mapya ambayo anajitokeza kila uchao tena mambo haya ambayo anajitokeza ni kwa ajili ya kumkandamiza mwananchi si ya kuendeleza hili taifa kwa hivyo ndio mambo ambayo mimi naweza kuzungumzia nikasema uhuru alikuwa ameona hii picha mali ipo jo alikuwa advisor yake alikuwa naye karibu zaidi alikuwa shamsoma zaidi kwa hapa mimi sioni shida ya kulaumiwa uhuru kwamba angezungumza kwa sababu alikuwa amepoa majibu kwanza angesema no sisi hataki ya majibu ndio kungezuka kwa sababu ni kitu ambacho kilikuwa nasubiriwa tu kungezuka na wakenya walikuwa wameshamuamini zaidi Ruto hata kama ngajaribu kuzungumza hayo wengi kutokana na kauli na matamshi ya Ruto yalikuwa mazuri yasiyo kuwa na matendo lakini yalikuwa yamekshika mashiko ya kiliza wengi kungechimbika ndugu yangu jo free kwa kunyamaza kwa uhuru na kusema jamani eh kama ni swadi ndio hiyo kama ni power ndio hizo wacha mimi niende na kwa kweli hajaenda seti ya uzali enda direct wakimsubiri seti ya uzuhuru alikuwa ashakwenda achamaza kazi zake hajaiacha hii nchi kumpa ruto kwa kikamilifu kwa roho yake alimsukumakia ni kama kumsukumania kitu shika bwana si unaaje na mamlaka haya ndio hayo pambana na hali yako mimi acha niende zangu ndivyo alivyofanya uhuru sasa kipi cha kumlamu cha kumlamu uhuru hapa kilicho baki ni sisi wa Kenya wenyewe tuamue huku tunakokwenda siko tuungane tena kwa pamoja tunamtoe huyu mtu hapa inawezekana asanteni Aya sawa 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 sa, sa, ndugu chaka sijui ni nani oh dakika moja hapa hebu kwanza hebu kwanza nicheze kanda moja fupi hapa alafu tuendelee closing remarks to I would want to take them from a small topic that's um, on the headline of the nation there just below there where you have this uh, story that four families in this country own more than 40% of the entire wealth of this country yeah. four families and uh, <laughs> you know it, this this is the story because you know this is one of the lines you know uh, areas uh, within which i'm very passionate because i have s- s- have shouted the loudest i've said this consistently that we have a very oppressive uh, system within our country that we need to correct and that is why uh, Trevor, if you ask me why did they jump the bus and immediately get into the bottom up uh, you know approach to government is because i believe that that is the way we are going to this is the route that we are going to use to correct some of these ills of society where you have four people owning the entire uh, wealth of 
more than 22 million people in the yeah. country, only owned by four individuals. And uh, if you go on to uh, read that story, it says actually about 130 people only own the entire of 70% of our GDP, 130. But look at these four families and ask yourself, then ho what hope is there? You know, you know uh, Trevor, do you know that the person who lives on a small uh, quarter acre plot of land within Nairobi, let's say in Kariako, pays the same, will, will be paying the same rate with somebody who, who owns Hilton Hotel, you know? And, uh, and, and the amount that the f biggest billionaire owes is taxed at the same percentage rate with the poorest person in the country. You know, that if you look at uh, our capital gains uh, taxing system, if you look at the brackets within which we tax our people, there is absolutely zero recognition. Yeah. If you look at the system that we should use to ensure that that taxation process results into reinvestment or uh, bettering of the society by putting at least much more of those who have more, back to society. That doesn't happen in this country. And that is why you find that if we were to proceed the way we were proceeding before, yeah. within probably another 50 years, then you would have found that this gap will have grown. And I want to uh, finalize by saying this. It is, this is not just talk we are having here. Yeah. It is recognized uh, globally. Within the index of research done f within the entire globe, we are number 189 of the countries with the highest inequality gap. Inequality gap. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that is tragedy for, 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 for our people. Yeah. We must take a different turn, and I believe we have taken it now, okay. uh, with the bottom-up approach to our economic progress moving forward. This should now start seeing a retrogression and a reduction, okay. such that we can have a fair society and an almost close to equal society, Trevor. And I want to uh, tell you, when you have a holiday next time, uh, go to some of these Scandinavian countries, you know, around Finland, Norway, where are those countries? Just go and see how those people live. Yeah. The inequality gaps in the Netherlands is unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's almost invisible. Okay. Such that everybody lives an almost fair... Okay, in our capitalistic system, we may not necessarily be able to attain that immediately, but we should be working that way. Every person is equal to in the eyes of God. Okay. All of us are. All right. Thank All right. you. All right, Malim. Godfrey. I want to leave in gear here. Just one minute, eh? Kuna huku jamaa, huku jamaa naitua Charles Aguara. Sijiko umesikia umo, so mwiyo kutangandika hapo. Anasama makwadi, that proves to you that eh? it was not Shebukati, Dr. Rizalski. You know, kuna kitu huu Charles anafaya elewe. What are we saying? Si tunasema huyu mtu aliepa, the guy aliepa from Bomas, some many hours, na akirudi, alirudi na his own results. Kumbuka kwa Bomas, kuna 27 constituencies, zilikuwa bada ata haja verify results zake. Now we still had one extra day. But Chebukati alikuja na results zake na akatangaza. So Charles afadali aelewe kwa the need to ongea. Hacha tuku sema ati Chebukati sijui doktor nini. Hakuna. We know what happened. Okay, Makedi. Aya, sawa. Nataka kusema hivi kusiana na hiyo video. Unajua nilikuwa ninasema hapa, these people have no plan. These people ndi wako na serikali. Ile vitu wanatuambia ni ile vitu tumekuwa tukijua data 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 go to the scandinavians and angalia taxes inyo wanalipa angalia kenya so na... hawana mpango ya kusaidia mwananchi na ndio unaona mtu kama governor wa Kiambu anaweza kuja kwa tv na kusema the reason why ali jump kwa sababu aliona kuna familia ine peke yake ambazo sijui zina hold what percentage ya serikali wakati baba ya watu wengine walikuwa natafuta hata kama ni kuiba wanasema aliiba Yeye walikuwa wapi? Where was his parents? You can't be blaming people right now, like I hear Rigathi Gashago every day talking about atisijui shamba ya maumau. You know these stories are becoming boring. Kila siku takuwa nambia watu mambo ya maumau, nilipiganiya maumau, sijui sisi ni maumau, mi maumau, maumau. Blaming an individual, Uhuru Kenyatta, of the sins of his, of his uh, father, if Baba Uhuru Kenyatta alipata shamba kwa njia hambayo haikuwa inafaa, you cannot continue blaming Uhuru Kenyatta. 
you are in power right now. You have the tools of uh, power. If you have the ability to buy land, if central people, people in Mount Kenya region do not have land, nakuna mtu ambaye, last time in 2000 and, uh, is it 2012, was it 2017, Ikiti ya mashamba ilileto kwa uhuru kenyata. At that time, the Rigathi Gashagwe, William Ruto, and the so-called uh, whatever, KKA, walikuwa upande wa uhuru kenyata. Na wakasema ya kwamba uhuru kenyata kuwa na zile shamba ni willing buyer, willing seller. Kwa sababu anasema alilipia kila shamba ambayo wako nayo saa hii. Saa hii inaonekana ya kwamba uhuru kenyata nafaa kulaumiwa. This is all about politics. Uhuru kenyata nafaa kulaumiwa kwa sababu ya uh, landlessness in Mount Kenya region. And we continue drumming up these, these, uh, these uh, beating up the drums of uh, inciting the poor against the rich. Saizi, Godfrey, Ouma, Ukienda, Ugonge. And this thing happened so much until people realized that it is going to uh, take the country into the wrong direction. Ukienda, Uguze, Mtu, Aboda, Boda. Unakumbuka this trend, ya incite the poor against the rich. This is what the Kenya Kwanza government is doing its politics on. Wanaendelea ku, you know, kuchomea base, inaito ku, kuchocha base. Ya kwamba kuna watu ambao wanatufinya kwa inchi, matajiri ambao wanatufinya kwa inchi, ndi wanafanya tunapata hizi shida zote. Yes, Mary, ni mio, uh, <laughs> Kenya ni Chepto, I, I keep on... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Chepto. Okay, Makiadi. I, you know, sometimes somebody can do something, agilete shida. There are those people who went to Rift Valley, they were from Central, and this land they were occupying, they had bought it. They go as a society and they pay for that land to occupy, and then they get the land. It's not free, they use their money to buy that big land, and then it is demarcated into pieces according to the number of people. Where are those people now? They have been displaced. Ruto cannot talk about those. Um, Gachagua cannot talk about uh, those. But they can only follow Uhuru, who has the right. Who has the right of using the land or having the land because his, dad, his father worked in whichever way, and he got it. He never grabbed, may, he bought it. He used his money by that time when people maybe they didn't have money, and he bought it. Come to think about those people who are displaced for their right land, and up to today, they have no land to occupy. That is my question, Makiadi. Yes, Godfrey, as we go to Leo. Uh, just to add something on what Chapter has said and Makiadi, you know, he propaganda ya kusema ya ku, ya ku insight what UDA used to, to, to campaign on, what insight rich na poor. When you know, before they took the seat, kuna propaganda walikuwa naeneza kusiana na hii mambo ya SGR na mamangina, wakusama kuwa SGR ni ya kina mamangina. They, they had a lot of propaganda on the family of Uhuru first. Kwa sabu anasema Uhuru, si jina ilo Brookside yake, alienda kamaliza central yote, akawa niye piyaki anafanya business. Business mingi zimekuwa zinafanya na familia ya Uhuru, which is all propaganda. But hiyo doa mekua kwa kiendelea kuitumia mpaka leo, na wali, 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 wali faulu kudanganya watu wengi na wakakubalea na mambo yao. Dazo ya nuna hii propaganda yote, hata Uhuru uto wisi ya minu kama ngeipata hata 2 million, 2 million votes, but ile propaganda bali tumia kudanganya nilifanya watu wakafikira kwa uta na kuja kusaidia kiasi ndo tisa kapata kura kidogo. But ya ngeipata hata 2 millions. The guy is full of propaganda na hakuna lodote tunuza pata kwa umutu. The four families, okay, badu wajataja the same family, but I know wanaongea kusu uhuru, uhuru yuko kwa hiyo family, the four families. Lazima uhuru yuko ndani. Bwana wa sitaja tuambia the families ambao na sema ndo hizi. Aya, hiyo wealth yao yote, tuone kama ukweli walikuwa nalipa tax ama kwa walipi tax. Kuliko kusema tu kujumuisha na hatuambili nendelea. Ah, leo, nimekuona bari ya masiku mingi bana. Happy New Year, tujaunana mwaka huu. <laughs> uh, happy New Year, uh, bana Makiadi. Uh, niko salama, nimejua tujaunana. Uh, ingawaje wakati wangu wakuja hapa studio ni imekua uh, tofauti na yako. Tumekua tukipita na hivi. Lakini niko salama. Naona Kenya mchepto bado yuko uh, hajachoka. 
uh, Godfrey Chakamdune kama kawa kwa kosi kupatikana hapa uh, na wakenya wale wote ambao wanakufuata uh, kwenye comment section uh, good morning kila mtu naona mna meleta hoja tamu tamu hapa ili tuweze kuzungumzia inchi yetu tukufu ya Kenya uh, but mostly uh, 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 i have to start by congratulating those guys uh, who sat for the KCSC uh, they've really performed well so whether the exams were real or whether they were leakages or whether there were some uh, 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 some issues we'll have to congratulate them we don't blame the students with them they were given an opportunity to sit for the exam so whether they did it prayer uh, that one is none of our business though we've seen some uh, uh, some improvement from the previous uh, examinations that have been taken so we also have to give credit to the previous uh, holders of that office i think uh, we had covid and they really managed to squeeze and uh, uh, ensure that the timetable the school timetable worked within uh, the shortest time though it was congested but they produced the results that is all i can say then secondly uh, there is this uh, conversation about hustlers I, I just want to take this opportunity to tell hustlers that currently uh, there is nothing for them there is really nothing for hustlers and uh, if there is any hustler outside there who still smiles and thinks that uh, there's something in the store i think yesterday i had the deputy president regarde uh, speaking somewhere i think it was in central telling them that we will only be having one bar and restaurant in each town to operate 24 hours the same was also said by the president who said that we are going to be having one bar in each constituency so we are now moving out from uh, uh, voting for your mp to represent you in the parliament but we will also be voting for one bar and restaurant to represent you in the constituency level so when you say that each constituency should only have one bar and you were saying that you don't want this issue of seeing a bar at each corner unaenda kanisani unaona bar unaenda kwa hii corner unaona bar and there is something that he failed to tell hustlers who are these people who are having these small bars and restaurants within the estates they are the hustlers those people who cannot be able to start or to uh, get a bar like uh, they cannot be able to have some big restaurants like hilton or uh, uh, or the ones they go to norfolk hotels and whatever so now he wants to suppress these hustlers by denying them an opportunity to start these small bars that they normally start with less money like fifty thousand, twenty thousand, 000 whereby they can be able to serve people within the estate they want to have each constituency to have one so tell me who ha which hustler can be able to start to operate such a bar with the 500 shilling hustler fund that they are being given in other words he's telling these people this business we are going to preserve it for the rich like uh, uh the nakuru senator uh, that uh, lady called uh, kiroche uh, like this owner of uh, the mount kenya uh, restaurant the one they went uh, uh, for the the last uh, induction that they were doing there so they are the guys who are now going to be getting an opportunity to operate businesses so business is no longer for the poor but is going to be a reserve of the of the rich then there's this issue that keeps on irritating me about the mau mau uh, we are sons of mau mau the mau maus are languishing in poverty I, I don't know if we have an exact number of those mau mau whose land was taken I, I came to realize that these stories are used politically and they only arise during campaigns these guys uhuru and the ruto were in government Ruto was the deputy president. Why was he not talking of compensating the people he keeps on telling us about the Mau Mau? Uh, Regardi have been Uhuru's PA for all this long time. Is it now that he's realizing that the Mau Mau lost their land? But if you look deep, I was looking at some of the revelations uh, uh, last week uh, from the people, the real Mau Mau. They're really claiming that these guys did not lose land some of them actually refused to take the land that they were being allocated i'm told there's some somebody who was even allocated the land where we currently have these great hotels that we're having in nairobi and they said no we cannot take that land because it, it doesn't rain there and they opted to go and take land somewhere in like Kipia. some were even offered land in some places like like Kipia, and they were saying no that place is far and they were selling this land at a cheaper price 
the neighbors and friends. So these stories are some uh, complicated stories that, that these people normally use. Wanataka kuchochea wanainchi, and they also want to divert the attention from the real issues so that we start thinking of some imaginary things that are not there. So they're just trying to create some, uh, 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 some theories each and every day. And as to the matter of the uh, uh, things, uh, revelations that are talking about, uh, Rail as well, I'll not comment on that because these are facts that have been there. We've always known it. We've been talking of these numbers. So people like Jeremiah Kioni cannot claim that it is when they know these things. These things even a common one, ain't she? Yeah. Even a Chokora in the streets knows very well and they can tell you that Raila won with this percentage. It was in public domain. So these people really failed us. I, I have to say they failed us. They became cowards. And this is what is costing us. Kenyans are really suffering. Things are not right because of their cowardice act. They ought to have acted. And even right now, we can just tell them that it, it is not over. They just need to act. You know, why are they delaying these other issues? We, 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 we can still claim it. I know uh, we cannot uh, uh, do it uh, better than it would have been done uh, earlier, but we still have options as citizens. We've already learned that these people we call our leaders and the secretary generals of these political parties, uh, they are not taking this matter serious. So it is upon us now to force them to take the matter serious. I, I can say that currently the Mutimbei TV and uh, uh, the Vungile Wanainchi is more active compared to people like Jeremiah Kioni who only sit at the come and give us some press conferences in this expensive hotel. They're doing nothing. They're doing. They're not doing anything to push out uh, at the agenda of the uh, the Wanainchi. So it is uh, the right time that now the common Wanainchi we take uh, uh, action and act, irrespective of what these other people are going to say. If we keep on waiting for them, they'll keep on giving us press conference after the other as Kenyans continue suffering. Uh, I think I'll stop there for now, but I'm still uh, around. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Leo. Good to see you, uh, Godfrey. To add something on what Leo has said, on the issue of Kioni, exactly, those guys knew it, but just ask yourself, kwa nini, wakati walikuwa nanda kutangaza matangazo, tunajua kapsa in Central kukua na shida, but guys from Central, ndo wakwanza ambao lianda kukubali, wanasema wa meshindwa, walikonsi defeat mapema sana, yet we knew mpaka kwa TV, tuliona kapsa kule nini, kule Central, watu wanapatikana na makratasi, wanapatikana na Form 34S, za ukora, Wanapeleka, but still what will consider defeat in Mapema. Exactly me, I, I, I agree with you, Leo. We want to act this ikit Mapema. Other, in fact, yesterday I was saying that eh, Raila Pali to miss. You know, Wakati Ukuru Amenda Central, it was not the right time for Raila to Raila argue what Wake would receive Ukuru Venali, and the root of Venali receive Ibo. No. Ange Kata, 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 Ile ndio isha kwa Raila pia kwa shakubali kwa Ruto ndio president sasa wacha tufanye kazi na ye. It was a, a, a big blunder ambayo tukosea ye pia. Alright, you know, there are, there are some things that we say here sometimes and uh, watu wanakuja kusema sisi uwongea uwongo. But what I can tell you is this. At the moment, uh, a president is sworn in. Hata wacha mambo ya, ku, ya kusua ina president. Wakati IBC chairman anapatia mtu certificate ya kwamba ye ndiyo amechaguliwa kama president. Hiyo kitu inakuwaga imeenda na mna hiyo. That thing is gone. And that is what we said. Even ile siku wenye tulikuwa tuna, I think tulikuwa tuna debate hapa. Tukasema ya kwamba we should have stopped this thing at the source. Pale. Lakini wakati chebukati ya litangaza na mna hii. Easy if it was in Guinea in a fwata, almost six months I after the election. Agree with you. Yeah, easy if it was in a kuja saim to an akuja na paper na na full scap and at one kona expose at ya kona dozia. Any good to potesia masa. Easy if it has it to saidina anything. People right now are strategizing for 2027. Na sisi kama watu ambao tuko the so-called upinzani ambayo wanapenda kusema opposition. I know there is the majority and minority, lakini kwa sababu jina opposition inawafuraisha, wacha tuseme sisi ambayo tulisema tuko opposition, we are supposed to put this government in check. This government does not need enemies. It has enemies within it. Na hawa ni wale watu ambayo wanaito hustlers. 
hustlers ndi watu ambao wataweka i government in check simply because they were over promised zile vitu ambazo waliahidiwa hazifanyiki and so you do not need a figure like Raila Odinga kukulazimisha kufanya kazi wale watu ambao liwaahidi ya kwamba utawapunguzia gharama ya maisha ndio atakukumbusha and it will not take the five years that these people think they'll be in uh, power for them to be reminded ya kwamba they are not doing what they promised the people they'll do for them a few months down the line tukiendelea namna hii you can see what is happening right now the cost of living is still going higher and higher every day the cost of power uh, the cost of doing business in kenya you know there is no employment we are churning out millions of students i mean of uh, graduates every year watu wanatoka technical colleges watu wanatoka university na degree wote wanakuja hawana kazi you know sometimes i look at uh, what is happening in my country saingine naangalia unakuta kampuni moja imesema inatangaza imetangaza kazi nataka ku employ watu wawili and then you see the kind of applications that are thrown to that job unaangalia siku za interview i think there was a company ambayo ilikuwa inasijui na recruiter about 50 sales salesmen ama sales women there's, there's a company and even it appeared in the news laini ilikuwa inaenda kama ile laini ya bank ya equity mwisho wa mwezi and these are young men ambao wako na degrees wamezieka kwa baasha hawana kazi so before we even come up with the issue of kusema ya kwamba Raila Odinga onge these guys William Ruto na Gashagwa wakumbuke ya kwamba kuna watu ambao wanajiita hasla na hawa hasla ndio watawalazimisha kufanya in fact let me say this in 2027 kama William Ruto anafikiria kwamba it will be a walk over for him he should be reminded ya kwamba the people alidanganya all over the country ya kwamba atawafanyia kazi ndio watu watamtoa hapa and you know the funny thing is this if we look at the situation that has happened in other countries where people have been overpromised and the government has underdelivered you cannot rig an election you cannot rig an election in a country whereby the economy is not doing well haiwezekani kwa sababu hata kama ni kule ambako ulikuwa unaiba kura kama kura zilikuwa zinaibiwa central na rift valley kuhakikisha kwamba mtu fulani amepita hiyo kiti ikikuja 2027 kama maisha ya wale watu ambao walikuwa na piga kura hizo sehemu na wanakubali wanaangalia hata kama kura inaibiwa wakiona na waongei these people will not allow you to do that and you can see what is happening with the farmers saa hizi tunangojea mahindi in a few days i'm looking at the calendar right now leo ni tarehe 21 tunangojea mahindi ikuwe imported gmo hii mahindi inaenda kufanya mkulima mwenye alitumia a lot of money kupanda mahindi yake aende kukosa market na kama atapata market atauza mahindi yake kwa bei ya hasara. Tunangojea mchele sijui ni tani ngapi. Wale wakulima wa mwea kule ambao uhuru Kenyatta aliwajengea damu ndio waweze kupanda eh, mchele mchele yao. Wanaenda kupata competition kutoka kwa mchele ambao inakuwa imported. And these are the people that supported this government, the current government. So it is very clear that coming 2027 the lives of the people that supported this government ambao kila weekend wanakumbushwa kwenda thanksgiving na maombi wakati president anaenda zile area ambazo watu hawakumpigia kura anaenda na so called eh, eh, goodies zinaitwa goodies kwizi Kenya, Kenya wanaita goodies yani president anakuja anasema nimekuja na goodies hii area nitawatengenezea barabara bilioni moja nitawawekea viwanda bilioni nyingine hizo zinaitwa goodies you can see what is happening and people have noted even the people who voted for this government know this wanasema sisi mnatulisha maombi na wale ambao hawakupiga kura mnaenda kuwapelekea development it is true si uongo because the president does not need you anymore makiadi sorry just for interruption you know these things that they call that the goodies or wanapeleka maendeleo you also have to tell kenyan that they are being given promises of maendeleo it is not maendeleo they are promises uh, we will only talk of maendeleo once they'll have to be realized Yeah I, I I agree with you these are promises but l- let me let me say this let me say this some of the things that we are seeing happening in the so called opposition strongholds are tangible 
unaweza ona ni kitu unaweza ona hata kama ni promise it is a promise with an action on top of that because this person like we said here before this person is looking for legitimacy and how do you legitimize yourself in areas that people don't like you unajipendekeza eh ukitaka kupata kamrembo pale unapeleka gift so your gift ndio inaitwa goodies lakini wale watu ambao walipigia and i have had even my friends tell me there's no need for us to be voting for people and then wakati tunamaliza kupiga kura namna hii these people do not remember asa watu kumbuke hata sisi wenye tulipiga kura because right now they have started the tune ya kwamba sisi tulipiga kura lakini tunaletewa maombi na thanksgiving kila weekend ni wapi ambapo president ameenda akasema ya kwamba ninaenda ku bring this development in the regions and and, and and let me be specific especially in rift valley especially in rift valley he is stronghold ebu niambie mind kwa hizo siku zote zenye president uh, amekuwa kwa hiyo kiti niambie kitu hata kimoja ambacho ameenda kuletea watu wake so called watu wake in terms of development zero simply because these guys preparing for 2027 and you know for a good politician unajua kwamba if you still using this method this time it might not work for you next time so you have to have a backup plan so there's a high chance that the president is looking for a backup plan right now and the backup plan might be to try and you know bring more voters who did not vote for you in the previous election into your basket the coast province did not vote for him western province was on its own ukambani iko kivyake nyanza iko kivyake so zile region ambazo zilikuwa zinampigia kura saa hizi asipotimiza ahadi yao people will not even wake up to go and vote right now hata tukisema raila odinga you know we, we used to say raila odinga is a very uh, controversial candidate when he's running for president he makes people go to vote Either wengine wanaenda kumpigia kura na wengine wanaenda kupiga against Raila Odinga. So, take for instance Raila Odinga is not running in 2027. And we have another candidate. Even the people that have been told to have been taught and coached to hate Raila Odinga will not have a reason to go and vote. And so how do you rig an election? How do you rig an election? Yes, Godfrey. Yeah, there's one thing ambao muongea kuhusu walk over on 2020 on 2027 you know if we cannot address this issue right now 2027 still our watu watatuibia kumbuka what happened 2007 07 kibaki aliapishwa usiku you see na hiyo tuliona kabisa imebiwa na kapishwa usiku na kabaki president so what we are trying to say makiadi as much as kila kitu shall happen evil we should not wait until 2027 we need to address this issue sahi hata kama itakuwa ni shida kiasi gani but we need to address it sahi kwa sababu what i know if they are able to manipulate in central paki kaonekana kwa central alipigia wote kura uhuru yet and rural ruto yet how to pick kura nini itakuwa ngumu kumbuka the guy anachukua stay ana, ana he's taking everything right now ana ameshashika court ameshika ibc na kwanza sahi najua ataleta watu wake tena ndateka pale pale so nini tamshinda kuiba next time hata kama watu watapiga kura still they use the same system na watasema watu walipiga kura na amepata kiasi fulani and still he will walk over on us so me what i'm saying i'm saying makadi we need to act on this thing right now we address the issue na wananchi watoke mimi what i'm advocating for i'm not advocating for vita but i'm saying we need to address the issue but ikiwa itafika wakati iwe ni vita basi wacha ikwe ni vita lakini tusiendelee tusikubali kukaa na government ambayo imetuibia na tunajua kabisa imetuibia You know there's something ambao umesema kuwa we, we want to address the issue mapema sana before atangazwe but now angalia uhuru ndo mimi naendelea ku blame uhuru uhuru knew it but aka, akaona paka watu wanaeka nini wanaeka red carpet but still he kept quiet kwa nini alikip quiet odot tuliona raila kwenda pale but at least angeongea yeye alikuwa ni president akawa shajua nini inaendelea angetoka akamwambia raila aenda kwa kiwanja mambo ya maribika but walinyamaza wote wakaeka red carpet mpaka usiku hakuna kitu ameka paka red carpet milana pale still hakuna mtu anaongea you know these things wali tumesa watu bana to see to see uhuru to we love uhuru but uhuru masters unajua god free your red carpet stakaye kusikia kitajwa hiyo carpet inaumiza watu roho sana kuna vitu mbili ambazo sitakai kusikia kitajwa na mmoja wao ni hiyo red carpet na ni ile lori ilipeleka 
evidence supreme court <laughs> <laughs> Mimi hata nikipatana na mtu amepost hiyo carpet mahali I just I just hate seeing that carpet it, it, it reminds me mbali sana <laughs> So mambo ya carpet achana nayo <laughs> mi, mi, Mimi nitasema namna hii Mimi nitasema namna hii na na, na na uangalie uangalie zile inchi ambazo eh, raia wa chini kabisa and it is happening right now it happened in brazil a few days ago although hiyo tunasema maybe there are supporters of one uh, one presidential candidate who lost the countries that uh, are not doing very well economically inakuanga ngumu sana for the sitting government for the sitting president to rig an election statistics zinaonyesha namna hiyo wananchi huwa wana ina huwa ina cause uprising kwa wananchi regardless of whether hawa watu wana wanakupigianga kura ama ni the so called stronghold yako ama si stronghold yako and the parameters zenye this government itakuwa measured uh, itakuwa zita, zitawekewa kipimo ambayo hii serikali itawekewa haitakuwa ni zile siasa za kupigwa na opposition itakuwa ni kipimo ambacho waliahidi mwananchi wa kawaida and that is why i'm saying you know right now things are going to get worse they have told us kila mtu amesema you know every country right now in the world is uh, sitting on uh, a time bomb so to speak kila mahali unasikia economy inasemekana kunaweza kuwa na kitu inaitwa recession some people are saying they fear recession kitu kama hiyo so if at all the government cannot mitigate and try to protect kenyans from you know cushion kenyans from the effects of this so called economic depression then william ruto will not have anybody to blame as far as i'm concerned saizi raila odinga hakuna siasa anapiga tangu raila odinga uh, akose kutangazwa kama mshindi raila odinga is literally mute haongei wewe tunamuona ameenda south africa eh, ameenda us akirudi kidogo kidogo akitaka kusema nataka kupeana direction nimesema hapa mapema ambassador wa all over the place you tell me ambassador wa UK ni nini uh, high commissioner wa UK ni nini anaambiana na Raila Odinga at this particular moment you tell me why why are they meeting why is it so much important for them to go you know waende wakutane na Raila huko wakae chini wakoe na discussion the next day tunasikia Raila Odinga ameenda South Africa for two weeks he's not around he's never around so it's like the current governor uh, sorry the current government it's so imekuwa ime, ime darling ya the west and the west inaifanyia bidding so for them to cool the opposition they have to use all these manner of uh, tactics you know send the ambassadors send the commissioners and uongee nae wacha tumwambie tutamtafutia ofisi ya opposition so that we can make his position legal and we can put that position in the constitution you know they are trying all manner of stuff just to make sure that hakuna opposition kwa inchi which is good which is good because you will have nobody to blame after the five years if it goes on like this na sisi mtembei tuko hapa sisi ndio sasa sisi ndio opposition wachana na ile watu wako huko kila siku wanaenda state house kupigwa picha you know politicians are always politician mwananchi wa kawaida ule wa chini kabisa the 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 uh, person ambaye anaangalia motembei tv ule ambaye anafinywa pale chini ndio mtu ambaye atakumbusha hii serikali ya kwamba ulituahidi kitu fulani na hujafanya so godfrey wacha wacha wasiwasi whether they put the ibc hata akichagua walisema uh, uburu odinga wakati alikuwa anatuambia uburu odinga sasa yeye ndiye atafuti hata nick nick ruto kijana yake amweke hapo if you don't perform kama mwananchi ataendelea kupata zile shida ako nazo sahi and it is going to get worse life is going to become even more expensive then william ruto will have nobody to blame hii wimbo yote wanashindaga wakituimbia hapa kila wakati sijui maumau sijui to inherit uh, whatever broke government this thing will not last for long this thing will not last for long so raila odinga does not need to speak wacha aende apumzike kama anataka kupiga siasa yake from the periphery it's okay but mwananchi wa kawaida ule anaumia ndiye atakumbusha hii serikali ya kwamba umeshindwa kufanya kazi ambayo tulikupatia ufanye if we allowed you to rule this nation then we have to hold you accountable and 2027 itakuwa ni story nyingine tofauti watu wanatuambia tusahau itakuwa wokova then let's wait and see maybe we might not even get there before mwananchi start complaining 
and this is what i want i want kenyans wale ambao wanatusikizanga wajue namna hii it is your role it is your responsibility to make sure that the government of the day is held accountable kama uli promise ya kwamba kwa miezi mbili ukiweka biblia chini utashukisha bei ya unga mpaka moja. then you should tell us kwa nini watu wananunua unga karibu tatu. kama ulituahidi ya kwamba utapunguza bei ya mafuta kwa nini saa hii bado bei ya mafuta iko juu don't tell us about subsidies zilikuwa zinaenda kwa mifuko ya watu that is not our business hiyo itusaidi na anything wale ambao walikuwa na kuwa ni wanaitwa wana makatel they know themselves even this government has its own cartels what kenyans need to see is results waone ya kwamba if i have a 100 bob na kama 100 bob ilikuwa inanipatia lunch that is what i expect i expect to be fed with the money that i have these are the parameters zenye tutakuwa tuna hold nazo hii government hii mahubiri yote yenye tunaambiwanga kila siku sijui mau mau sijui tuli involve nini this thing will pass itafika wakati ambapo utajaribu kusimama unaambia watu inherited a government wakwambie kaa chini utuambie ni nini utatufanyia let me play a video here and then uh, i give you an opportunity ya kuongea my brother leo the journey to Dennis Ondingo's house in Kibra's Gatwe Kira village starts early Wednesday morning and we find him and his young wife busy packing for the journey ahead that both seem so excited about. Tanikifunguliwa biashara ya electrical shop I can do the management of that na nifanye vitu zangu kule nyumbani. After a 39 year stay in Nairobi's Kibra slum having been born here he notes that the time to begin life in a new home is nigh. Mama alikuwa ameenda nyumbani kitambo. So masomo yangu nilianza Old Kibira. Nikatoka Old Kibira nikaenda Ramba High School. Kutoka Ramba High School nikaenda Technical Institute. Ilikuwa Kenya Industrial Training Institute Nakuru. Nilifanya diploma in electrical engineering. Ondingo struggled to find stable employment in the city for years before he decided to go into business. That grocery store picked up quite well until two years ago when a myriad of challenges financially and in his relationship forced him to abandon the business. 16. 26. With lack of a steady stream of income, life for his three children and his young wife has been one full of downs lately. <laughs> Her husband Dennis has made plans to have his son going to Standard 8, live with a family member for the year, and join the rest in Siaya once he's done with his studies. He hopes to join his mother in business ventures as he looks for work there. We are doing monitoring and evaluation to ensure that the businesses can stand on their own. And we keep on talking, we keep on giving feedback, and we also make field visits to see how are they doing. This is one among 50 families voluntarily going back to their home villages in Siaya, Kisumu and Vihiga counties under the financial and logistical support of Natural Capital Trust that is working with the county and national government administration officials to support them settle back into their ancestral homes. Mutu kuambiwa unarudisho nyumbani, uende kuenyu, kama hauna kanyumba ndio hako shilingi 10 ndio hii ifanyie hii na hii na ile most of them came from west i mean western kenya and because of that we felt uh, so as to reduce operation costs let's focus on one region and given it's a pilot we do not want to expand so thin 55 year old peter okumu has been in the public service transport industry since he was 18 he too was born in Kibra and raised his seven children in this one-roomed house for the last two decades. And we give them about a month to settle down and away other opportunities that might be available on the ground so that they don't go in with a formed opinion.
But many residents of uh, such informal settlements like here in Gatua Kera Kibra, the clamor for the menial jobs that are little and coming slowly every single day and the ever rising cost of living is some of the reasons many are choosing a second chance at life and hoping that the trip to the ancestral homes will be a new beginning. <laughs> Uh, we provide them with a seed fund and they set up businesses. We also work with them psychologically because we have uh, what we call psychosocial support because sometimes migration can be a shock. The waste here in Kibra flows meandering in the middle of the settlements in various villages here in Kibra constituency. But even then, uh, there is a story of hope of many who are leaving this kind of settlement and starting life afresh in their ancestral home. <laughs> Selina Viambo Cheno, who came to Nairobi in the early 70s, will have her late husband's family to hold her hand when she gets back home after over three decades of doing menial jobs in the city. Ule buwanaake, pia likuwa na pali pake. Sasa hapo ndio uwa, tunaenda kumjengea. Nili amua tu sasa nimeona niende tena nianze maisha ya huko nyumbani. Ameenda nyumbani baada ya kufanya vile alisema atafanya na akafanyiwa amerudi Nairobi. Akafikiria Nairobi ni, ni kubwa sana, ameenda kujificha sasa Soweto. Tukikupata tutakustaki. Kwa sababu umeharibu nafasi ambayo mtu mwingine angefanya nini? Angepatiwa. With a new beginning hundreds of miles away from what they have called home for years, some like Dennis are hopeful that things will definitely change for the better. Leila Muhammad. You can see that is an example of what is happening right now in Kenya. Uh, families, individuals that have lived uh, almost the uh, entire life uh, they've had uh, you know they've been born in nairobi so far wamekao for more than 30 years wameamua kurudi nyumbani because life is unbearable they cannot uh, you know support themselves and feed themselves you know house pay house and everything clothe themselves for uh, reasons economic na wameamua sasa wacha warudi nyumbani Waende waka relax huko labda pengine maisha itabadilika siku nyingine na warudi Nairobi. So these are the things that we, are, we, we, we keep on reminding people here. And you know these are the people ambao tungeita uh, hustlers. Ambao sasa maisha imekuwa ngumu zaidi. Hakuna vibarua. And you know most of these people ni wale ambao walikuwa wanatumika kwa hii miradi ya Nairobi ambayo ilikuwa kwa serikali ya uhuru kenyata. Siju ilikuwa inaitua kazi mtaani ya manamnagani. Na hiyo miradi ya kazi mtaani. Ya yeah, kazi mtaani. Likatika na bia kasema ya kwamba uwezi uh, patia watu kazi ya mjengo. So wakakata hiyo kazi. Wakati raia walianza kulia kasema atarudisha kupanda miti. Sijui kama kuna mtu wa miandikuwa kwa hiyo mradi ya kupanda miti mpaka wa leo. I have not heard of any. And so I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm saying here again that the people that voted for this government if at all kuna wale watu ambao wanajiita hustler ambao walinunua hiyo narrative ya CG hustler this is our man Ruto CG alikuwa anauza kuku this person has no has no concern for you whatsoever William Ruto hajali mtu wa chini kama vile anawaambia kila siku he has no concern for you whatsoever this guy was all about power he would do anything to gain power and he did everything to gain power now that he has power he does not know what to do with it yeah you there's a saying that uh, goes uh, you know you, you you might just get what you wish for so chebukati and william ruto they got what they wished for they don't know what to do with it anymore and now all they'll keep on doing is telling us aditi aditi zasiju kidnapping mara sisi ni watu ya mau mau Hakuna kitu ambayo wanataka kutuambia kwamba wanaweza tusaidia, wanaweza saidia mwananchi wa kawaida. And I'll keep on saying this and repeating this every day, every day ya kwamba this government has no plan. 
hawa watu hawana plan ile manifesto yenye walikuwa natuambia we have a plan walikuwa naita the plan hakuna mtu anaiongea siku hizi hiyo kitu ilienda na ikazimia kabisa namna hiyo na tuitaka watu wa kuzimia kumbe manifesto yao ndio imezimia so let us be vigilant because very soon they will come up with another conspiracy theory that is what they do every day mnakumbuka wakati ambapo mambo ilikuwa imeanza kuchemka namna hiyo akatuletea mambo ya cherera for we are going to establish a commission to investigate hiyo story ya cherera nani anaisikianga siku hizi Le, leo unasikia mtu akiongea mambo ya hiyo commission anymore No, actually, uh, 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 what happened is this. Eh? There is yes. one thing I want to tell Kenyans. <laughs> These guys, you know, Ruto is a man who can promise you everything as long as he achieves his mission. That I have to give to him. He can promise you heaven when he knows very well he doesn't even know the gate to heaven. He will even tell you how he was your family member so that you he feels part of you that is what he've been doing to church and that is what he did to the hustlers ruto realized very well that majority of the voting block in kenya are those people who unlaw and live in these uh, <coughs> the, the, these settlements like the one you've seen kibera and over these are uh, informal settlements so he crafted some lies to deceive these people how he's going to change their lives and because you know kenyans are people who are so easy you can easily manipulate them that is why you see kenyans losing money each and every day like if you tell them kuna miradi hapa they'll spend their money if you look at africa i think kenya is the country that is having most of the betting companies they are in camp in kenya and they are making profits and they operating daily matiangi tried to uh, to close and lock some of them and they come here daily apart from this channel of ours you go to the mainstream media after every five minutes there is an advert of betting or uh, things to do with the kubahatisha and if you look at our comedian their contents have been changed to betting company so that is what happens in kenya so this guy promised uh, 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 he used to talk of smes during his campaigns nowadays who he has of the smes the small medium business whatever he now changed the narrative now that they want one bar or one restaurant these big units which are not hold, held by common wananchi kazi kwa mtani this thing was helping hustlers uh, uh, directly they were getting some money they were working he came uh, 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 when you look at the video we just played why these people go even they don't even have money to go home these are people who stayed in nairobi they were depending on this kazi mtani they will work and at the end of the week they will get something to pay their rent and to buy some food now kazim tani has been ended they were promised planting trees it is not coming they were promised mjengo mjengo is not coming how do you end uh, if ruto was sincere angewaambia hii kazi mtani ni kazi mbaya nataka kuiondoa lakini kabla niiondoe wacha ni niwaweke hapa kwa mjengo that is how it happens so there's nothing is doing to help these people and there's nothing is planning or is having in that plan that plan was not there that plan was just uh, some dream uh, that th- th- they don't believe in it and you never hear of it again right now do you hear them talking of the hustler fund it was hyped at, at the beginning sayo mambo hustler fund may may shaivo and let me tell you it is only in february by march you will not hear of anything about hustler fund they are no longer updating as of hustler fund they're just getting stories to divert our attention so by the time we will realize that that 50 billion that was hyped uh, went to somebody's own pocket it will be too late so nobody will tell you the hustler fund is not there and maybe from next month you'll not even be able to access it so that is how these people they don't have any plan common mwananchi hakuna mpango hapo what they are busy doing is they are busy appointing their people and their relatives like the other day they they, they fired somebody and appointed dualless relative in the ketrako yeah ketrako is the one that deals with i think with the trades and whatever so that's the only thing they are doing kazi yao ni kutafutia mabwenyenye kama kina mdaba ni kazi kutafutia the other day he met uh, uh, the women uh, women representatives and promised them is is going to add these women uh, uh, how do you call it the affirmative action fund so this affirmative action fund i, I know most people in these constituencies they don't know how this money operates they've never felt uh, uh, the uh, the weight of this money so these are the people he is giving money he promised senators through that bbi that he wants to bring in parliament that is going to give them a, 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 something called oversight fund so which oversight fund if uh, uh, somebody at the bunge la mwananchi like gaucho can be able to oversight a government without even a cent so why would a senator who is earning a salary be given an oversight fund 
So all of this is to capture this uh, a parliament so that they can be able to dance and uh, follow his tune. So that is what is there. There is nothing that the government is doing for the common Mwananchi. Let us not be deceived. The campaigns were over. The promise that the promises we were given are over. We are waiting for other promises for 2027. That is what they are planning for. They also want to disorganize the voting pattern in Nairobi. They've realized that Nairobi major voters are lawyers and lawyers. So they want to disorganize you. They want to frustrate you so that you go back to the rurals so that they have a, a small number that they can be able to manipulate. Let not be cheated. The Kikuyus who stay in Nairobi don't vote in Nairobi. Most of them run to vote in Kiambu, Tika, and their uh, uh, rural areas. It is majorly lawyers and lawyers who vote in these slums and they have some constituents that are reserved for them. If you look at the places with the majority of the voters, you'll find them in places like Mbakasi East, Kibera, Lang 